My name is Ian Saunders. I just turned 23 and I am a freelance uh, designer and motion designer. I have a lot of interest in animation. Currently, uh, I work full time at a grocery store. Uh, it varies. I mean, like, I'll wake up at like 7 a.m. some days, maybe some days I'll wake up at noon. Just depends on what happened the day before. So, kind of a blur, but I mostly am awake for the same amount of time every day. I like playing the piano. It like really, it's, it's calming. I like music, making music. I, I view music as kind of like a hobby, and I've always wanted to do it seriously. Someday, I guess that's like an idea I play around with, but to me, music is just an escape from reality. A lot of the animators that I grew up watching, like John Kay, Ren Stimpy, Steven Hilleberg, Spongebob, I grew up copying the cartoons that I watched, which is what got me into wanting to do this for a living. I think that people get too bogged down with what other people's opinions of what you make are, and that can hinder you creatively. Like, when I was a kid, uh, I made comics for the hell of it, and I didn't care, and I made so much. And looking back, I mean, they're, they're not great, but um, I, you know, I, I never like stopped. And I think that some part of growing up, uh, you kind of let everybody else's opinions affect what you're making. And I'm, I'm starting to grow out of that. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm not that accomplished yet and I'm getting there. And if I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm struggling to even pinpoint a single thing, but, um, I'm just getting up and making stuff every day and hopefully that leads somewhere. So I've done the designing for the Little Room and all of that merchandise uh, or, you know, just the look of it and I just hope to keep that, that ball rolling. Both. Well, not like extremely messy, like I'm not, a, like, you know, I, I, I like when stuff smells good. Um, I don't like when there's stuff on the floor, but as far as like shelves, bookshelves go, it, it's, it's, it's scattered sometimes. Also like, sometimes I'll leave food out, but I'll clean it up. Be a dragon because you have all the power of being the dragon. If you owned a dragon, it'd probably kill you. <laughs> Same. It's very true. Yeah. I was just kind of there. <laughs> like, I liked, uh, I liked elementary school and like middle school, but really just did not fuck with junior high or high school, honestly. Like, I, I was just there, and I always, just, I always kind of felt like a background character. And same kind of thing went for college a little bit. Um, I feel like I haven't really been starting to come into my own until like a couple of years ago. So school school was like a little tough for me, but it's, it's over now. <laughs> and then, you know, it was fun. Like, I had fun in school. Go with the flow. I guess, because I think a lot of people, they try to be controlling of everything that goes on in the world. And if there's anything that this year has taught me is that that's not entirely possible and you can't beat yourself up for that. So you just have to kind of, get, you have to get what you can get from a situation and just keep going. Honestly, like my first year of college was a huge breakaway. Um, Cause like what I just said about like high school and whatnot, like I always kind of felt like a background character and like, when I got into college, it was the first time that I felt like I could actually like be a little weird, you know, and like express my ideas because I was going for like an art degree and I was meeting people that did that. So it was the first time that I just kind of like the floodgates opened and I saw like, oh, like there are adults that still are just as weird as when I was a kid, you know, like they didn't change at all. So that was, that was eye opening. And uh, yeah, I like that. Honestly, I can stab my fingers really well. Do that shit, you know. <laughs> like, um, honestly, the last one that I had that I quit, it was they shoved me away in a corner and I basically was just putting in information for furniture. Um, it was very depressing and uh, the people that I worked with had been doing it for years and they were very depressed and it's something that it did pay well, and it was sort of like an IT position, but it just wasn't something that I saw doing for a long time. So I kind of had a panic moment when the pandemic started and I quit. And uh, 
I, I don't regret that. I do every now and then, but I really don't regret that fully. Fantastic Mr. Fox by uh, Wes, like Wes Anderson with uh, like the little animated foxes. If you haven't seen it, it's great. It's like it's like a, it's it's for like both adults and kids, and it's funny as fuck. And it's about foxes. Uh, the Road by Cormac McCarthy. Um, it is the most depressing <laughs> book ever written, and it's fascinating. And they made a movie about it that's like just as depressing. It's so it's about like basically like there's a lot of movies that are about the apocalypse where it's. You know, like The Walking Dead, where it's like everything's shut down and, you know, things have run to shit. But like, in the road, things have run to just complete shit. There is no hope in the road. Like, like there are just hordes of cannibals. This guy's traveling across the country with his son. And it's about like a father, son, and like that bond. And it has like this huge emotional undertone that makes it like super compelling. Um, and Cormac McCarthy's definitely like a master of writing some like really hard-hitting shit. So if you want to just take a day and cry, read The Road, and also watch the movie, because it's, it's, it's fucking, it's an experience. Uh, I would say comic book though, The Watchmen. Nice. Uh, the Watchmen is, it's, it's like more than a graphic novel. It's, it's, it's like a fully fleshed out story. And the movie did it completely. It, the movie, I mean, it's fine, the movie's fine, but like, they stuck right to that source material, and uh, I fucked with that. Probably Hunter S. Thompson. Um, I'd love to like just have some crazy dinner with him and like shoot guns after or something. Um, yeah, he would be he's he'd be interesting. He was a writer back in like I probably can botch this, but like, he's a writer back in like the seventies, eighties, or you know sixties. He did Gonzo journalism, so he wrote about like the Hell's Angels and like uh, you know Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and that kind of like like he and he he did a lot of drugs and he was just he was a real free spirit guy. And I like watching old interviews with him. Oh man, that's like... <laughs> I've been tame my whole life, honestly. Like, I guess like, this one time, uh, me and my friends were in the neighborhood. And uh, like, we, there was this giant beehive. It was like fucking massive. And like, they were all throwing rocks at it. And there was a house like right behind this beehive. So they were trying to take this this thing down, and I guess like one of them like shattered a window. So I had the cops like come to my house, and they like said that I did that, and my parents got like really really mad about that. And to this day, I am saying I didn't do that. I didn't I didn't throw rocks at somebody's house, but for the longest time, like I don't know, I feel like my parents still think I did that shit, and I had to go see the cops. I went to the police station. And it was like traumatizing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, you know, police, whatever. Um, it, I don't, I've never really gotten in a lot of trouble, so maybe that'll change one day, but probably not. <laughs> I'm pretty tame. I've always wanted to get into advertising because I think that as a designer, like you, you can reach the most people through that, especially like nowadays or for, like ever, you know, like if. Um, and I think like I just want to be kind of like a trendsetter or like a well-known designer that is, you know, making a ton of advertisements and doing freelance stuff also. Like, I think that like, if I just keep making stuff and coming up with ideas, like that question shouldn't even matter. Like I should just, it, it should answer itself. And then people could be like, oh yeah, that's like Ian, he does that. And like, that'll be the impact. But I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know, like, I, I think when you're asking yourself like, what is my impact gonna be? Yeah, you, you, you gotta put it in perspective, like how much impact are even the most popular people really making? So, I would like to start being a little more active in the community and giving to charity. I think that's a, that's a really good way of getting forward. So. Yeah. Yeah. Pineapple has a acid in it that dissolves your taste buds. I didn't know this. Um, cause I used to eat, I fucking love pineapple, but I used to eat like too much of it. And then I would wake up the next day and my tongue would just be like raw. Like I wouldn't be able to really taste anything. So I think if you're going to put it on pizza, you should warn people about that. Also, I don't think it's that good. <laughs> like, uh, my Instagram is underscore Ian underscore Saunders. Uh, I have a Adobe portfolio. I'm working on it. It's built, it's building right now. Um, also you can follow the little room. 
because I do all the design work for them. Um, but I think right now I'm sort of in like a building phase. Um, I want to be more active on social media and have more of a presence. Um, so that's that's my goal going forward. My main goal uh, is to just get out there. Because if you're if you're a designer and you're not getting out there, then you're just you're wasting your time. I think so. It's good to do that. So hopefully I'll have a better answer to that question in the future. <laughs> I guess you can come see me. I live on 200 South Gettys Street, apartment 504. Come knock on my door. Weird. Yeah. All right, how's that? Yeah.